So here we are in a new section, looking at another conic section called the hyperbola. So we're going to have two types of hyperbolas. We're going to have some hyperbolas that look sort of like this, in which we have what's called a vertical transverse axis. So the transverse axis is the axis that intersects the hyperbolas. This one has a vertical transverse axis. And then we have another type of hyperbola that looks something like this. In this case, if you take the transverse axis, it's going to be horizontal. So that's what we're looking at today. Vertical transverse axis hyperbolas and horizontal transverse axis hyperbolas. First, we'll look at the vertical type. So hyperbolas with vertical transverse axes. So the hyperbola with center h, k, foci, h, comma, k plus c, and h, comma, k minus c, vertices, h, comma, k plus b, and h, comma, k minus b. Transverse axis, x equals h, and asymptotes, y equals plus or minus b over ax minus h plus k, has equation here. Here's the equation of a, ooh, here is the equation. Let me see if I can write this. The equation of a hyperbola with a vertical transverse axis. So notice you get the y minus k squared over b squared minus x minus h squared over a squared equals 1. So keep in mind you want 1 on the right-hand side for a standard equation. But notice when you have a vertical transverse axis, the y term is the positive one, and the x term is the negative one, right? So y here is positive and the x one here is negative. So keeping that in mind. So, yeah, your center is going to be h, k, and you're going to find the, you're going to use the b value, that's the value down here under the square, to find vertices. So from the center, you're going to go up B, and then you, from the center, you're going to go down B. That is going to give you your vertices. So you're just going to have two vertices. And you're also going to find something called C. And C squared is going to be A squared plus B squared. C squared is going to be the sum of the squares. And you're going to go start at your center, and you're going to go up C from your center to locate one focus, and then go back to the center, and then down C to locate the other focus. So the foci, foci are two important points that determine all the other points on the hyperbola. So the hyperbola itself is the red curve. So the foci, the green points here, are not actually part of the hyperbola. They're not part of the hyperbola of the green points, but they determine the red points. And also hyperbola have uh, asymptotes that they follow. So these blue lines... These blue lines are the asymptotes that the hyperbola will follow, and they have uh, b over a, x minus h plus k, and minus b over a, x minus h plus k. Okay, uh, so that's the vertically um, transverse axis hyperbola. Then you have a horizontal transverse axis hyperbola. You have a center of hk, foci h plus c comma k, h minus c comma k, vertices h plus a comma k, h minus a comma k, transverse axis y equals k, and asymptotes plus or minus b over a, plus or minus b over a, x minus h plus k. So these types, this is the equation, x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. So keep in mind, again, you have to have it equal to 1 here on the right. And notice here the x part is positive and the y part is negative. So when you have a positive x part and a negative y part, you're going to have this horizontally transverse axis hyperbola. So you always start off here with the center, h, k. That's here in the center. And then you're going to use the a. No, oh, a should be red, right? So a is going to... Um, come from the a squared that's underneath the, the x term. So you're going to go to the center, you're going to go right a to get one vertex, and to get the other vertex, you go to the center, and then you go left a to get those two vertices. 
and define foci, you're going to find c. So to get c, you have to use the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So you add the two squares together to get c squared, and then you take the square root to get c. And once I find c, I go to the center, and I go right c to get one focus. That'll be my, say, f1. And then my other focus, I go back to the center. I go left c. That'll be my second focus. So your foci are not going to be part of your hyperbola curves, your hyperbolic curves. But they're important points that determine where the other points are on those red curves. And then you got two asymptotes that the red curves follow. One is b over a, x minus a plus k, and the other one is minus b over a, x minus h plus k. So, let's get to it. We're going to give you some equations. Go on. Some equations. Uh, that are hyperbolas, and we want you to graph them. And the first one, um, the instructions are find the orientation of the transverse axis. Find the center, find the vertices, find the foci, the asymptotes, and graph the hyperbola. So here we have x squared plus, sorry, x squared over 16 minus y squared equals 1. So we'll start with x minus blank squared over blank squared minus y minus blank squared over blank squared equals 1. So I'm going to have x minus 0. So here my h is 0. y minus 0. Here my k is 0. And underneath the x minus 0 squared, I'm going to have, let's see, 4 squared, right, to get 16. So here my a is 4. And then under the y, I'm going to have 1 squared, right? 1 squared to get 1, which is underneath the y squared. So that's my b. So here, my center, part b, is hk, which is 0, 0. Oh, yeah, I forgot to do the first part. I forgot to do the transverse axis. Transverse axis. Part a. Transverse axis is going to be horizontal. Y horizontal. Well, it has a positive x part. So you see here the x part is the positive part, right? The y part is negative. So the x part is positive, so it's going to be a horizontal transverse axis. Okay, so let's start graphing. I like to just get to it and start graphing. I'm a graphing kind of dude. So let's graph. X-axis. Y-axis. So my center here is 0, 0. Right, that's my center. I have a horizontal transverse axis passing through my center. And here my my A. Ooh. My A is four. So since we have a horizontal transverse axis and A is associated with the associated with the x value, I'm gonna to go to the right four, to the right four to find a point, a vertex from the center. So one, two, three, four. There we are. So we're going to have something going on like this. Then let's go back to our center, 0, 0, and let's go left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's going to be another vertex. We're going to have something going back this way. So part C, my vertices, I got two of them only. I'm going to have 4, 0. I'm going to have negative 4, 0. These points. Now, part D, I want to find foci. So to find foci, I'm going to have to find C. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C squared is, what is the square? What are the squares? 16 and 1. I'm going to take 16 
plus 1. So c squared is 17. So take the square root of 17 to get c. I'm going to about 4.12. So now I'm going to go back to the center. 0, 0, I'm going to go 4.12 to the right from the center. 1, 2, 3. 4.12, so right about there. It's going to be one of my foci. 4.12, comma 0. My other focus, so I got f1 is about 4.12, comma 0. My other focus, so I go back to the center and left, 4.12, 1, 2, 3, 4.12. That's f2. Negative 4.12, comma 0. Okay, uh, the last real thing we need to do is find the asymptotes. So the asymptotes are going to go through the center. So we're going to have y equals b over a, x minus h comma, x minus h plus k. So y equals, remember, b was 1 a was 4, x minus h was 0, plus k was 0. I have y equals 1, 4, x plus 0. So this is a line. And remember, this is of the form y equals mx plus b. So b is 0. That's the y-intercept. And m is the slope. It's 1 fourth. That's the slope. If I want to graph this line, I'm going to start off with the y-intercept of 0, so right there on your y-axis, and use a slope of 1 fourth. I'm going to go up 1, right 4. Or I can go down 1, left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, maybe you get a nice ruler to connect these. It's going to be one asymptote. And we're going to have to adjust these green, these green curves later, so they follow the asymptotes. Let's do another one. The other one's going to be y equals minus b over a, x minus h plus k. y equals minus one fourth, x minus zero plus zero. y equals minus one fourth, x plus zero. So here we have our b value is 0. That's our y-intercept. And our m value is negative 1 fourth. That's our slope. So when we're graphing a line, we always start off with the y-intercept, which is 0, right here. And we're going to go, the slope's negative 1 fourth. So I'm going to go down 1, right 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or I can go up 1. One, two, three, four to the left. I'll take a ruler and I'll connect these points. And if I do it right, it should go through the center. I'm not drawing very well. Okay, that's better. Let's erase this a little bit, some of these marks. Okay, so I want my green curve to follow these asymptotes. Oh, oh crap. My green curve needs to follow these asymptotes. So there it is. See my green curves? My green curves is actually the graph. My green curves actually make up the graph. The red foci are not part of the graph. So what is the graph here? The green curves, the green curve. Try to get rid of any stray marks here. 
Yeah, make sure you clean it up at the end like I'm trying to do here. To the green curves, they are the actual graph. All right, there's a number one. There's a number two. Here I got y squared over nine minus x squared over four equals one. So I want to rewrite this in sort of a standard form. Y minus blank squared over blank squared minus x minus blank squared over blank squared equals one. So after the y minus, I'm going to put a zero. After the x minus, I'm going to put a zero. So my k, that's this guy right here, is zero. And my h, that's the one that's going to come after the x, so that's going to be zero as well. And underneath the y squared stuff, y minus zero squared, we're going to think about what squared, what squared will give us, ooh, that went crazy, didn't it? What squared will give us 9? Well, the answer to that is 3. So I have y minus 0 squared over 3 squared. Then I have to ask what squared will give us 4, and it's going to be 2. So under x, excuse me, minus 0 squared, I got 2 squared. So b is 3, so b is associated with y, and a is 2 because a is associated with x. So, are we going to have a horizontal or a vertical transverse axis? So that's going to be the part A. Transverse axis is going to be vertical. Why vertical? Well, notice this y squared part. That's the positive part. So the y is the positive part. The x is negative. The y is positive. So since the y part is negative, going to be vertical, here's where the x is. Okay. Now we're going to do the, the center. Center is hk. It's going to be 0, 0. Then we're going to go to do the vertices. There are only going to be two of those, so I'm going to start my graphing somewhere. Graph. So, we have a vertical transverse axis. Let's put down the center here at 0, 0. And we have a vertical transverse axis. It's going to go through the center. So since I have a vertical transverse axis, I'm going to have my vertices on the transverse axis. So I'm going to use B, B to determine my vertices. Because we have a vertical transverse axis. B is associated with Y, the vertical stuff. So back to the center I'm going, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3. I got 0, 3. Then I'm going to go back to the center and down 3, 1, 2, 3. 0, negative 3. So my vertices are 0, 3, 0, negative 3. Okay, so we're going to be kind of going up like this, and kind of down like this, and just roughly, roughly. So I'm going to put some dash lines here to indicate that because we are going to really get this more accurate later after we put in our asymptotes and everything else. So don't get too carried away in trying to be accurate because you really can't get too accurate until you get those asymptotes in at the very end. So I'm just going to put some light dash lines just to give me some guidance as to what direction I'm going into. All right, what do we do next? We're going to do foci. Foci, the focuses. To find foci, you got to take c squared, which is a squared plus b squared. You're going to have to find the c. So a squared is 4, and b squared is 9. So I'm going to take 4 plus 9. 4 plus 9 is some of the squares. 
C squared is 13. I'm going to take the square root of 13. I'm going to get a bounce. 3.61. I'm going to go back to the center, and I'm going to go from the center up 3.61. 1, 2, 3.61. Right about there, that's going to be one of my foci. It'll be 0, comma. Let me get this right. So it's not equals, it's actually approximately. So let's say it right. F1 is approximately 0, 3.61. So F1 is about 0, 3.61. And F2, well, we go back to the center and then go down 3.61. 1, 2, 3.61 down. We have 2, about 0, 3.61. 0, 3.61. All right, let's do our famous asymptotes, part E. Y equals B over A, parentheses X minus H, close parentheses plus K, and the other one is Y equals minus B over A, X minus H, minus K. So Y equals what was B and what was A? B was three, A was two, so I'm gonna have y equals 3 over 2, x minus 0 plus 0. So y equals 3 halves, x plus 0. And the other one, y equals minus 3 halves, x minus 0. That should be a plus k, plus 0. I don't know why I had a minus. Yeah, that should be a plus k, not a minus k. So in other words, minus, y equals negative 3 halves, x plus 0. So we're going to graph the first line. Y equals mx plus b here, so the b is 0, and that's the y-intercept. And the slope here, m, is 3 halves. That's the slope. So to graph that, y equals 3 halves x plus 0. I'm going to start off with the y-intercept, which is 0. It's actually the center. I'm going to go, what is it, up 3 over 2. 1, 2, 3 over 2. Or I can go down 3, 1, 2, 3, left 2, connect those. That's one asymptote. My other asymptote is negative 3 halves x plus 0. So here our y-intercept is 0. It's the b. And the slope, m, is negative 3 halves. So I'm going to start at my y-intercept. y-intercept of 0, which is the center. And I'm going to go down 3, right 2, or up Three, left, two. And connect those to get our asymptote. Now, our green curve has to follow those asymptotes. So let's kind of readjust this green curve a little bit. Just going to follow the asymptote there going upwards. And then let's go back to the green curve going downwards. So go starting at the vertex, I'm going to head down toward the asymptote on the left and down toward the asymptote on the right. So there I have it, my green function. My function it's not a function, right? It's a hyperbola, which is technically not a function, but it's, a, it's an equation in two variables. So the green curves make up my hyperbolas. So we got those blue lines. Those are the asymptotes that are not actually part of the curves. They are simply there are simply lines that are, our curve is following in the, the foci, F1 and F2, and red, they are very important points that are not on our curve.